And in matters on Cape Land, we're continuing our discussion with State Senator Darren Soto, a Democrat of Kissimmee. You were talking to us in the first break about some of the hot criminal justice issues we've been talking about in Florida. Of course, the new uh, ban on texting while driving, while moving in the car driving, is in effect in Florida. But you say there's some other issues that need to be looked at with that. Right now, under Florida law, if you text and drive and you kill or substantially injure someone, there's no specific penalty for it. So we've had multiple folks getting careless driving tickets uh, or reckless driving tickets when there's a death. Hmm. And the families cannot believe that there's not uh, a, a greater punishment. My bill, it starts out hefty as a vehicular homicide, but we'd be willing to amend it to... to have maybe a lesser offense, but it should at least be a felony. We know when you text and drive, you put folks at jeopardy because you're not looking at the road. Mm -hmm. And certainly if you were drinking and driving, you'd get one of those charges already. Sure. So the time has come for us to at least have something more than just a civil offense, a fine, and a slap on a wrist. Right. Uh, if your loved ones were, were killed by that, you'd be outraged and yep. many of your viewers would be. So sure. It's an issue we're going to be following forward on this year as well. The life of a loved one is surely worth more than a ticket. Right. No course. doubt about that. Okay, that's interesting. Let's talk about the budget surplus because it's obvious that Florida's economy is starting to recover. Right. And there's a projected perhaps $840 million surplus to go to, to spend for next year's right. budget. Um, what happens with that money? I know the governor wants $500 million in tax credits for businesses. That would be about half of it right there. What do you think happens with that money? Well, first of all, half of it is non-recurring. So okay. that means we only get it one time um, based upon vetoes and other things where we save money on this year. I think that money about half of it needs to go back in our reserves. Obviously, when the economy was uh, tough, or tougher, rather, uh, during the recession, we had to dip into a lot of our reserves and make sure that we didn't have to cut education as much as it already was yeah. in health care. So I think we have a responsibility for the fiscal long-term responsibility of our state for half of that to go into the reserves. Of the other half, I'd like to see at least 100 to $200 million go back into education, both K through 12 and to universities. Universities received a $300 million cut two years ago, mm -hmm. and we're still reeling from the $1.3 billion cut that happened a couple years ago through K through 12, where we're still not back at 2007 levels. Mm -hmm. These are, and how has this affected people? Tuition had to rise for universities. Professors were cut, uh, and so in my district, tuition rising is a big trouble sign. So I want to make sure we have enough money so tuition doesn't have to rise again. On the K through 12 le level, the teachers were fired, electives were cut back greatly, sports and other after school activities, tutors, all these things were wiped out. Things we used to have. So I'd like to see at least 100 to 200 million go back to remedying those issues. With the rest of it, you know, there's a lot of competing issues, but for for me, the biggest priority is reinstating the auto fees and other fees that were raised in 2009. What's the price to do that? Uh, it would be any, it, we don't have to do all the fees, but I'd like to see at least 100 million to 150 million go back into that, particularly the auto fees. Okay. Because for me, I'm looking for tax cuts for middle class folks. We've already had economic development issues and other issues for big business. They already get marketing money, all sorts of things. So I'm looking for, if we're going to do a tax cut for the middle class, and that means auto tags and other things that everybody has to have. And that's money that will go back in the economy. Regarding the K-12 through education funding, do you put the money directly into the classroom or do you give pay raises to teachers well, if you had to do one or the other? Well, I would say we don't have to do one or the other, and I do a little of both. The reason is we are not competitive anymore mm -hmm. in our salaries, and that goes to one of the bills I'm going to be filing, which is the Fair Teacher Pay Act. Right now, we're losing teachers to Georgia and to Alabama, who frankly aren't exactly the education beacons of the United States mm -hmm. here, because we pay our teachers the bottom third in the nation. So I'd like to see a bump up because as in the private sector, you get what you pay for. And right now, they start off making in the around 30, 28,000, maybe they go up to 40-something at some point, and then we're losing
losing a lot of experienced teachers. Mm -hmm. Remember when you were growing up and the teacher was 40, 50, 60 years old? They knew everything. They had eyes in the back of their head, mm -hmm. and they were masters of their craft. We're losing those folks because they can't eke it out on 40 or 45 thousand dollars a year after being there for 20 years. Yeah. So some of it has to go to that, and other parts of it need to go into having more electives again and more sports options for our kids because I do believe those well-rounded. Uh, options make our kids uh, um, better able to compete going forward. It's not, well, math and science and, and reading, all those things are of the first priority. Mm -hmm. We need to have kids who are well-rounded, and the arts and music help do that. And, and, our, and culture is big business here in Central Florida with Disney and Universal and other issues. So I'd, I'd like to see a little of both. Not necessarily the answer you wanted, but... That's that's where I would like to see us go. Governor Scott uh, wants five hundred million dollars in tax cuts for businesses. Does he get it? Does he get all five hundred million? I think they give him a little bit to allow him to save face in election year, but he was rebuffed pretty quickly by the Senate leadership in the House. They never saw a tax cut for big business they didn't like. So I expect him to do well in the House, but it takes two to tango. And our budget chair wants the auto fees reduced. And with Scott trying to reflavor himself as an education guy, I don't see him really doing a wholesale rejection if we put a lot of that money in the education budget. Uh, so he may be put in a spot where he just has to take what he could get because we in the legislature do the budget. He has the veto power, but we craft the budget. and. Those are our priorities. Uh, Taking a quick commercial break, we'll be right back.